Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. And uh, this is my camping companion. Oh, I'm Alos Diaz. And uh, in this video, we want to talk about, uh, let's see, what are we going to talk about in this video, Alos? Butter coolers. Say that again, bud. Butter coolers. Budget coolers, that's right. Budget coolers. Okay. I recently watched a YouTube video titled Best Budget Coolers Under $100. At first, I thought this video might be a good one to share on my Modern Tent Camping Facebook page, but after watching it, I changed my mind. In fact, I got so angry watching it, I started ranting. I was angered because the video was presented as an objective comparison of budget-priced coolers when, in fact, it omitted some of the best budget-priced family camping coolers such as the Coleman Extreme 52-quart and the Igloo Max Cole 50-quart, and it violated several basic principles of objective comparisons. It was, in reality, just a biased commercial effort to sell a few selected coolers. It began by lining up 12 very different coolers side by side out in a sunny spot, pre-chilling each with a full load of ice, placing indoor-outdoor thermometers on some, refilling each to capacity with ice, placing two bottles of water in each, opening and moving the water three times a day, and determining the number of days before all of the ice melted in each cooler. It concluded that the Igloo Latitude 50 quart was the worst cooler because it only retained ice for four and a half days, and that the Igloo Max Cold 62 quart was the best cooler because it retained ice for seven and a half days. But this procedure was flawed in at least eight ways. First, it failed to include any of the coolers that I would consider to be the best family camping coolers. Second, it suggested that the best cooler is defined only by the length of ice retention and ignored other important features to consider. Indirectly, it suggested that length of ice retention should be the only factor a family should consider when buying a cooler. Third, it suggested that people typically use coolers to chill a few bottles of water, pop, or beer that will remain fresh when submerged in melting ice water. In reality, camping families use coolers to chill food items that will spoil if they get submerged in melting ice water. Like many other cooler videos, it overemphasized the small savings in ice cost and ignored huge differences in cooler cost. In reality, most families that take less than 10 camping trips a year would never recover the $300 difference between a budget-priced cooler and a high-efficiency cooler. Fifth, it compared coolers that differed in four important ways, brand and model name, size, shape, and features. It's hard to draw conclusions when you don't know which factor accounted for the longer ice retention. Sixth, although the coolers varied considerably in size, the video failed to tell the viewer the amount of ice that was used to fill each cooler at the beginning of the test. The 25-quart cooler probably would only hold about 10 pounds of ice, while the 62-quart cooler probably took 30 to 40 pounds. Coolers that started with more ice at the beginning would likely retain it longer, regardless of the insulation quality. Seventh, it failed to acknowledge that pre-chilling a cooler requires extra cost, time, and effort. And the only reason to pre-chill the cooler is to artificially extend the number of days that ice will be retained. In reality, pre-chilling a cooler is no different than just buying a second bag of ice during the trip. And finally, it exaggerated the significance 
of seven and a half days of ice retention versus four and a half days of ice retention when most camping trips only last four days or less. For example, this is the amount of ice that was left in our cooler after a three-day camping trip. We had put a 20-pound bag of ice in our 52-quart cooler without pre-chilling it, and now we just have to throw this ice away. So, in addition to ice retention, what important factors should a family consider when buying a camping cooler? First, it should be large enough to hold enough food for two or three days. I believe that 40 to 55 quart coolers are best suited for most camping families. Families with larger cars could get a larger cooler, while families with smaller cars would need a smaller cooler. In this regard, you should know that most cooler model numbers correspond to their capacity in quarts, but Yeti is an exception. Yeti model numbers consistently overrepresent the actual capacity. For example, the Yeti 45 only holds 37 quarts, and the Yeti 65 only holds 57 quarts. The exterior dimensions of the cooler should be small enough to fit into your car. And the traditional budget price coolers such as Igloo, Coleman, and Rubbermaid require the least amount of packing space. While the more expensive coolers such as Grizzly, Arctic, and Yeti require much more packing space. Rectangular shaped coolers facilitate a dry food storage basket on one side and are easy to open in a car and easy to find food items located inside. Square coolers on the other hand are taller and best suited for beverages only. Budget coolers are priced several hundred dollars less than high-performance coolers, and you can find many good ones for less than $50. A good cooler should have a dry food storage basket so that meat, butter, cheese, eggs, and other perishable, perishable items stay dry when the ice melts. Unfortunately, fewer and fewer budget price coolers have baskets each year. But if the cooler does not come with a basket, it should at least have a ledge near the top where you can add an aftermarket basket or a homemade basket. A good cooler should also have a drain plug on one end, but again, every year fewer and fewer budget-priced coolers come with a drain plug. So in order to drain melted ice water, you just have to remove some of the food content and turn the cooler on its side. Your cooler should be light enough to pick up and place in the back of your car even when filled with food and ice. Traditional coolers typically weigh less than 10 pounds but high performance coolers typically weigh 25 to 35 pounds. And finally you should avoid coolers with wheels and handles because these extras require extra packing space and make it difficult to open your cooler when it's inside your car. Now let me list some budget priced family camping coolers with capacities between 40 and 55 quarts. In addition to their budget price, these coolers are lightweight and compact. They're easy to carry and easy to pack in most family vehicles. Most have drains, but a few do not. Most do not have baskets, but you can buy or make one to fit. If you think you might want one of these coolers, better buy it soon because they're getting harder and harder to find in the stores. I'll begin with the Coleman Steel Belted 54 Quart Cooler because it is a modern version of the old personal ice chest that Coleman introduced in the 1950s and quickly became a necessary piece of camping equipment for most families. This cooler reportedly holds ice for five days. It can be purchased from REI, Home Depot, and Walmart for about $150, but I just found this one on sale at Cabela's. We've used this Coleman Extreme 52-quart cooler for about three years, and it has been a great cooler. 
Target offers it for $45, but it appears to have been discontinued by the Coleman Company and may not be available on the internet much longer. This Igloo Max Coal 50 quart is another very good budget price cooler that reportedly will hold ice for about five days. You can find it at Dick's Sporting Goods and Walmart for about $65. I think that the all-white marine coolers are a very good choice because the white exterior reflects the heat better than the darker colors. This is the Coleman Marine uh, 50 quart cooler that can be purchased from Walmart for $55. The Igloo Marine Ultra 48 quart cooler can be purchased from Dick's, Sporting Goods, Home Depot, and Walmart for about $50. This Igloo Island Breeze 48 quart cooler is a no frills cooler that does not come with a drain or a basket, and it probably doesn't hold ice as long as some of the other coolers, but it's hard to beat at the price of less than $20. Rubbermaid also makes a very similar cooler, 48 quarts with no drain or basket, uh, that um, can be purchased at Walmart or Lowe's for about $20. And finally, I should mentioned the Igloo Latitude because it was mentioned in the Budget Cooler review as holding ice for four and a half days, which is pretty good, and it's very lightweight and economically priced. Well, I hope that this video provides information that will be helpful to you in selecting a cooler sometime in the future. For more information about budget-priced coolers suited for camping families, please visit my website, Modern Tent Camping, and look for the cooler information on the More Information page. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. <laughs>